This is the third and final two-way sync tutorial. This one with no unique ID on the sheet. Previously, we've looked at setting up two-way sync with a row aligned ID where the row and the ID had some mathematical relationship. Also, how to set up two-way sync when the ID, when there is a unique ID still, but that ID has nothing to do with the row. It's random as far as the sheet is concerned. This time, we're looking at something a little different. There is no unique ID at all. I've changed the setup a little bit to make sure that there aren't just unique students here since the student names were unique in the other examples. Here I have a date, one of two managers, Mary or John, one of only three technicians, one of three sites, and the technician can put one of five ratings. But I have the same needs. I want to allow edits on the filtered sheets to draw back up into the database. So two-way sync still, but I have no unique ID to go off of. Let's open up the app script, see what we can do there. And the logic that I want to go through, since there isn't an ID that we can readily find, I'm going to use the entire row as the ID. So in other words, if I come here and edit this row, then the ID is going to be this. Oh, I still have a script running, so it's clearing out the data as I go. Let's do it on this one. If I were to edit this row, but on Mary's sheet, This would be the ID. 91321 Mary Jesenia 25. That entire thing as a single string is going to be the ID that I'm going to use to find the row where I should put the new value. How do we do that in the script? So this is still the script we had from syncing with rows. I'll go ahead and leave it so we can compare. I'm going to change this to sync no ID. the actual function. Now as with the syncing with a row and syncing with, with no row ID, all this top stuff is going to be the same. No matter what, we need to get the source, we need to get the sheet where the edit occurred, we need to get the range, the cell where the edit occurred, we need to get our out uh, conditionals if we edit the database or if we edit row one, I'm actually going to get rid of this if we edit the first column in case a date was inputted incorrectly. And as always, if it was a valid edit, clear out whatever was edited so that it's not overriding as long as possible. Let's make sure just that itself is working. Come over to the Mary sheet and let's say uh, last time Helen came and looked at site two, she actually meant to rate it as a three. That's what we're going to try to do. It's clearing out. That's what we want it to do right now with this r.clear, range.clear. The next thing I did is get the ID. Let's do that same thing here. Let ID equals, and instead of getting a specific column of the row, I'm going to do source, get range. The range is, of course, going to be at the row. Start column one, but rather than just getting a single cell, because this just gets column A of the row we edited. We're going to get one row and five columns. Okay, we have five columns here, A through E. Dot get values. And importantly, I'm going to convert those values into a string. Arrays naturally have this two string method. It's going to convert the entire array into a single string. Let's just see what that itself is outputting. So same thing, Helen says this was actually a three, not a two. It clears out. We come check the executions. Yes, perfect. As a string, and we can tell because it doesn't have the square brackets around it and it has the commas between each value, it's getting that entire row as a single string output. Now, 
we want to get this we want to find that same row on the database so we're going to use the same database code from before let data db get the database that should be a const we're never going to change what db is and then let db data db dot get data range get data range is going to get the entire range returns a range corresponding to the dimensions in which data is present or in other words it gets everything <laughs> this is a function equivalent to creating a range bounded by a1 and sheet dot get last column sheet dot get last row so get everything where there currently is data dot get values now here I do not want to convert this immediately into a string. Even though the ID we convert it into a string, I don't want to compare that ID versus the entire range. Rather, I want to check that against every single row. So I want Mary Helen to two to check against this. Mary Sampson three one. John Helen two two. Mary Jacenia two five. John Sampson three two. Mary Helen 22 stop. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so I don't want to convert this entire DB data into a string. I just want to get the values. Instead, we're going to loop through it. So let I in DB data. So loop through all of it. If DB data I, so the current row, dot to string is equal to id right now let's just log it db data i dot two string that's it right now loop through all of db data if the current row of db data as a string is equal to the id which the id is the entire row where the edit occurred converted into a string then log out the row that we found let's try it mary helen 2 2 bump that to a 3 clears out properly still doesn't move it over yet that's next perfect it's getting both values right we have two loggers here one logging when the id was found one or, or logging the ID itself, the other logging when that ID or that row was found in the database. And that's where we're getting is those two. So finally, we need to get that value put onto the database so that it flows through to everything. We're gonna do that still in the for loop. Get rid of the logger. db.getRange. This is going to be the I this i so the row that we're at i is not actually an integer but it can be cast into one by simply putting a plus sign in front of it and we want to increment it by one because remember the array is zero indexed so this first position in the array is zero zero this is one zero two zero i want this to be one two three need it to be for the purpose of the spreadsheet so we're going to increment it by one the column is going to be r dot column start. I mean, it's almost exactly the same as what we did here, right? All we need to do is change this instead of row. We're going to use plus i plus one. So it's very much a lot of this is the same logic, the same idea that we're just incrementing on a little by a little by a little. We started with make sure that the row and the ID and the row have some similarity, some relationship to each other, then use any ID whatsoever. But now we can just skip that. If you want, if there is an ID, use the ID. Um, it's definitely a shortcut. It definitely makes it work a little bit simpler, but we can get around it like this. And then we're going to return. We don't need to run any longer after we found the correct location and put the correct value there. Save it and test it. Mary, Helen, 2-2. Two, two. Let's make that 2-4. There we go. It's got it perfectly. And it's back here as well. It changed that to a 4. 
Works on Johns as well. Uh, this Samson realized that uh, this shouldn't be a five; it should be a three. Works perfectly. All right. So if you do not and cannot have an ID, you can still use two-way sync by using the entire row, the the data from the entire row as the ID, converting it into a string, comparing that to a string version of every row in the database, and then setting the value at that location.